The effect of earthquakes, though dynamic in nature, can be dealt with as statically using a static G analysis. This is accurate for low-level buildings and structures that do not twist significantly and assumes the structure responds in its fundamental vibration mode. Up to 30 static G load cases can be included. These are the E load cases, and they're automatically combined as occasional load in the code compliancy. One major effect of using a static approach to earthquakes is that the nonlinear effects like gaps and friction can be considered which are ignored in the dynamic solution due to the limitation of the frequency analysis. Typically, horizontal earthquake movement is often accompanied by vertical movement, which has a magnitude that is typically less than two-thirds of the horizontal movement, so it's common to include both the horizontal and vertical component in an earthquake load case. Options for entry are user-defined or selecting from one of the five localized design codes in the drop-down. The codes include ASCE uh, 2002, 2010, and 2016. 2010 and 2016 both include the ability to retrieve the mapped spectral response values for the corresponding zip codes or the latitude and longitude location. They also include the Chinese GB 50011-2001 code and the Mexican Federal Electricity Commission 2008 code. For piping supported on buildings, the earthquake forces are also proportional to the height of the supporting point, since points above the ground are expected to move more than points near the ground. This effect of changes in equivalent earthquake load with height can be applied using the static point earthquake factor or the static member earthquake factor found on the insert extra data menu. This is typically a applied to a range of points around the supported point. The static G load can be varied at different locations by factoring. To factor all the weight, you must use both the member and point earthquake factors. The members work on the pipes, the contents, and the insulation, and the points work on applied weights like valves, flanges, and additional weight. Wind is a load that is considered as a statically applied force calculated from the wind pressure at various heights. Some general information applies to all wind profiles and has to be entered first. The position on the ground elevation is important as the wind speed and hence the pressure increases with height. And if the origin was not located at the ground level in the piping model, an adjustment can be made in this dialog. Wind shape factor describes how the wind impacts a cylindrical body. Some standard methods like the UBC and ASCE methods already account for this. So the value would be one for these. Otherwise, 0.6 should be entered if it's not accounted for. The wind can be applied to the whole model or part of it using segments, and it can also account for partially buried piping where adjustments can be made. The application method refers to how the wind pressure area is determined, either taking a normal component applied to the whole area or projecting the area of the pipe perpendicular to the wind direction. A number of standard methods are available to determine the wind profile. Additional information will be requested when one of these codes is selected and modified to describe the type of structure and its location. The UBC and early ASCE codes require a number of factors and wind direction. Tables from the codes are included in the help to help you enter the required information. The later ASCE methods give additional consideration to wind speed up at escarpments. The user profile method requires the presser versus height information. And essentially, the standard methods are producing a table internally, like the user profile table from the entries given. And you can view this in the model input listing under the load summary subreport. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.